Hey guys, this is uh, Jonathan McCormack. I'm an attachment specialist here in New York. You can find me at attachmenthealinghelp.com. First, I'd just like to thank you guys for the feedback and kind of letting me know, um, you know, what you're struggling with and uh, what you're going through. Uh, this time I thought I'd talk about the red pill at attachment problems. You know, I deal with attachment problems and what I do is I heal wounded parts and I heal the inner model of how you relate to people. So <laughs> think about it, you're trying to have a relationship, but the adult you really isn't in the relationship when you're triggered or activated. Um, so a, a partner, you ask a partner for a favor, they say no. What gets activated is almost like a little child part who remembers being rejected when they were a little kid. And that was very dangerous. So they come on board and they want to help and they are the ones reacting. Well, <laughs> try to have an adult relationship when you have a little six-year-old part that's dealing with things. That's simply not going to work. So I try to heal the attachment piece. But you know, even after the attachment piece, you do have to learn relationship skills and dating. If you don't heal the attachment piece first, <laughs> it's going to be very difficult to imagine being uh, activated all the time and trying to learn these skills. It's too difficult. So uh, the <laughs> so a while ago came out the red pill, and I think basically what happened was guys were guys and girls didn't know how to relate to each other. Uh, it's kind of difficult. We used to have rules and social uh, rituals, and now it's like, oh no, sorry. Listen, you just have to invent an entire new sexual ethics on the fly, depending on how, how things are going. It's like, ah, oh, it's a little difficult, you know? And uh, so the red pills kind of came in, the red pill guys came in to uh, school everyone. Uh, there's some truth to that. Most of the explanations are, are incorrect. Um, mostly this is a reaction to men being nice guys. I don't mean being gentlemen and holding the door open holding their seat. That's being a gentleman. Being a nice guy means someone who's always deferring to the other person. And nice guys, those types, are not nice. Robert Glover's No More Mr. Nice Guy is the book for that. And guys don't understand why women are turned off by that. It's because you're manipulative. I, I know you don't believe that, but it's true. Uh, so, I had a guy, I used to do date coaching way back in the day, and uh, he got a date, and he goes, I'm going to bring her roses, I'm going to show her roses. Ladies, tell me, tell me, how would you feel? You don't even know a guy, and just shows up with roses, first date. Maybe it's a little sweet, but I told him not to. I was like, you don't even know if you like her. He's like, no, I'm being nice, this is to show my appreciation. But what do you appreciate? You don't know her. What do you appreciate about her? You don't know anything about her. What you're doing is you're trying to buy her. Please like me. Here's a rose. Please like me. That's what you're doing. And women know that and they can't trust that. You know, it's not authentic. Third date, fourth date, yeah, you appreciate her. Yeah, you get her something, bring a rose. Nothing wrong with that. But it's authentic. Uh, and women need to know where you stand. Nice guys, you never know where they stand because they're always deferring to someone else. Uh, so, uh, you know, I had a woman tell me she had no idea what meals her, her husband liked. Because no matter what she would cook, he'd always say, this is great, honey. This is great. Oh, do you like it better than this? Do you like it better? No, everything you do is great. Everything. You can do no wrong. I just love everything you do. Yeah, that's, that's not true, though. Uh, it's clearly you, you, you like some things more than others. It, if he can't even be honest about the meals he likes, what else is he lying about? Where does he stand? How can you trust a man like that? Um, and there's a way to do it. You don't sit there and say like, oh, well, this is uh, pure crap, honey. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't say, this is great, but I tell you what I really love is X, Y, and Z. But you're just being honest. You're not afraid to disagree. So she knows exactly where you stand. Like, oh, this is where you, this is where he's at. 
you know? Uh, but no, nice guys, will, believe me, you can argue with them. And they'll just say, no, I'm just being nice. I'm being considerate of her feelings. I am not being manipulative. You are, you know? And that's a big turnoff for women. Um, <laughs> so these guys are anxious attachment. You know, they're always staring at the other person, not acting from their own center. This is what I believe, this is what I believe. But looking at the other person, Ooh, should I say what I believe? Should I say what my politics are? She might get offended. I don't want to, you know, well, you, you want to be considerate, you know, but, but you still want to be honest. Um, so the Red Pillars guys came on, and to fight that, they kind of went way to the other side. And they're kind of like, listen, all women or borderline personality disorder. Yeah, all women and all men, therefore, have to be avoidant. Pretty much just shut your, your emotions down, and that's how you do it. And they would teach men how to be avoidant, basically. And I saw a whole generation of men go from anxious to avoidant. And these guys would get the girl. They'd learn. They'd learn all the pickup moves. Um, and they'd be confident. <sighs> but uh, they wouldn't keep her. It wouldn't be intimate. Why would you want a relationship where there's no intimacy? I get it. A warm body is something. It's something. I, I, I understand loneliness. I do. I understand that. I understand the desperation. I used to do these dating, um, like I said, these little like, workshops. And it, uh, men, men. And I, I'd, you know, I ask them, like, how many guys are here to um, you know, find out how to get laid? Yeah. Not a single one would raise their hands. How many guys are here and because they want love and to feel something? Everyone raised their hand. You know, it's embarrassing. But that's all, all these pickup guys doing this, that, the other thing. They're really trying to get that confidence. They're really trying to make the connection, you know. Uh, so they become avoidant. And <laughs> the relationship just won't work out. Yeah, yeah, they know what to say and what to do and all the little techniques. But it just wouldn't work out, you know? Uh, just like even if you learn how to speak to each other and how to communicate, that still can be really difficult if you're constantly getting triggered, you know? Uh, like I said, I'm less on the relationship side. I'm more of like, well, this is how you heal all those triggers, you know? And these alpha guys are just like wild. They went so far the other way. I don't know if you guys have listened to them, but they're like, listen, bros, loving your children. It's a cuck move, bro. You know, you got to be alpha. Real men don't love their children. They don't love their wives either. That's a simp. Love your wife? Yeah, simp. Okay, buddy. You need to, she, she will devour you whole, you know. Uh, I mean, just the things you hear, like, incredible. It's like, why would you want to be with someone you don't even love, uh, you know? You need to control them with fear and, and manipulate them. I mean, geez, wow. I mean, it's so psychotic. Um, but also, just why would you want that? Um, <laughs> but but, but they, they do have a lot of things that's actually true. Why it's true is completely incorrect. And by the way, ladies, anyone listen to me, correct me. I'd love to hear your experience. So the red pill guys will say, like, listen, first of all, you need money, right? And you need money because women like money because it's, they're very superficial and materialistic. That's why. That's why women like money, like guys who like money, have money. Well, I mean, first of all, my, myself, I'm very partial to money. I like having money, you know. It's not just women. Um, but there's a reason for it, a very good reason for it. What if the reason wasn't superficial? What if these things that women like actually told you about a man's character, which is important, and it's not superficial? Well, I mean, listen, if you tell me, if you say, I, I, have, I have a buddy, 30 years old, makes 200 grand a year. He's got his own house. Okay. He has money. I can tell you a couple things about this guy. I can, for all I know, he sells crack. For all I know, some, he won the lotto. For all I know, maybe uh, his daddy gave him the money. But I bet you 80% of the time, most of the time, I'm going to find some things about this guy. I'm going to find out that he is responsible. 
Not many people are going to give you a good job unless you're responsible. I bet you I'm going to find out he is very reciprocal, you know, that he knows how to um, help others and be helped. Um, that's true with the rich. You know, the poor live for the day. The middle class live for their houses. The rich live for social engagements. Because if you, when you have a wide social net, life's easy. Life's very easy. You know, your kid needs a car. You have a million people to call. You need to go to the doctor. You know so many people. You can get advice and help. And, and that's, that's essential, you know. That, that's a piece of security. Um, I bet you that person makes like 200 grand. I bet you he's um, generous. If you look at real alphas and not, not the cartoonish thing, even in the wild, like gorillas and uh, you know the apes, you think like, well, the head ape, the head dude, he's gotta be murderous and just kills everyone and brutal. No, actually, he's usually someone who helps a lot of others, make sure all the monkeys have monkey wives before he gets his little harem. And he actually helps a lot of people out. The guys that just come on board and just destroy, you know, just take what they want, those little monkeys get, like, killed. They don't have a very long kingship there, you know. And it's true with a lot of people on top. Not everyone. Boy, I know a lot of exceptions. But I'm just saying in general, I bet this guy who makes $200,000 a year is, um, I, I bet you he can defer pleasure and he has long-term thinking. I bet you that's true. Again, sometimes it's not going to be, but 80% of the time. So when he hears people say, oh, women like money, <laughs> what does the money tell you about the person? I mean, women, they're not stupid. They can't spend eight months, a year, three years, Seeing if this guy's the real deal. See if he really is responsible. Really, you know, make us say anything. No, no. But if he shows it, that tells you a lot about character, and that's not materialism. That's a man's character. So I would suggest what she's interested in is the character. That's the most important thing. Money is just one way to show that character. You know, the other thing is confidence. You know, men. I see you very much resent women, uh, you know, like, oh, you know, women, they only like confident guys. Well, how does someone get confident? Through being competent. And that's how you do it. And if you're competent, that probably means that you have some respect from your little tribe. That probably means you're good at something. That probably means you get paid for it. Probably means you're appreciated. You know, being confident tells you a lot. <laughs> you know, if, if you're going to trust yourself and your kids to someone, you want to know that these things are, um, that, the, 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 that your children and you are going to be secure and you're going to be safe. Uh, so when red pill guys talk about all these things about women, <laughs> you know, they'll say some of these things that are true, but then I'm like, oh, and this is because women are, uh, you know, just... Uh, Beasts. I mean, listen, guys, if you don't increase your gross personal worth, if you don't get a raise 2.5% every semester, your girl will stab you in the face and cheat on your brother. That's what women are. No loyalty. That's what they are. Just ravenous. They don't want to, but uh, it's biological, bro. You know, uh, they can't help it. Um, it's just evolution. Just evolution. I got to tell you, the reason women are acting this way are some good, good reasons. At the same time, though, I do recognize that the uh, dating scene is, uh, I mean, it's monstrous. It's very painful. I mean, it, it's like the Hunger Games out there. Uh, there used to be like, little ways to control these things, and now it's kind of just, just a free fall, you know. I mean, geez, talk about like Darwinian uh, hyper competition, you know, Tinder and all these things. And uh, the boomers invented this. Here, here's a great idea. Instead of finding someone in your little your little circle, like the church you go to, and you say, hey, is anyone, you know, the old lady says, oh, I got a niece who I think you'd like, or uh, the neighborhood you live in, or whatever. Say that. How about this? We'll just <laughs> just bump into a stranger, ask them out. Okay. You get a lie. You, you you pretty much lie to them for eight months. They lie to you for eight months about who they are. 
because both were very nervous about showing who they are. And by then, you guys are pretty intertwined, and then you get married. Good luck with that. Okay, how about that? <laughs> Boy, just dating strangers? I mean, it's kind of hard. We used to have a social group. We used to go to that social group. And indeed, if you are looking for someone, that's why I would suggest you do. You find a social group. Church is great if you go to that or any other spiritual place. Um, everybody who goes to a meditation uh, place has been going there for years. Yeah, and now he's like kind of, he lets people know, like, you know, I am looking for someone. He's got a lot of friends there. And, you know, this girl's like, well, actually, my sister would get along with you because she knows him. And she knows the sister. So they really can't lie to each other. They, they know each other. They, they you know, she's going to call them out, you know. So there's at least some kind of bond. At least there's something there. Um, otherwise, it, <laughs> it's just uh, too difficult. I mean, we all know it need, takes a, uh, you know, a village to raise someone. It takes a village just to keep people together, you know. It, it's helpful to have uh, a big social group, too, you know. Uh, there's some other things I could say about the red pill philosophy but if you guys have any opinions or disagreements or how the dating scene has been you know please let me know I, I'm, I'm fascinated by it and just curious of how this whole red pill philosophy and how dating is working out with people's attachment styles so i appreciate you guys listening uh jonathan mccormick have a good one